Welcome everybody to our worship service, our online worship service. We are here in the chap beautiful chapel of Winona, of Wesley United <laughs> Methodist Church in Winona, Minnesota. And uh, we are very appreciative of you and your family being with us in worship. I'd like to invite people to, um, after our service, uh, that when it airs on Sundays, um, at 11.30, we're going to be um, having an opportunity uh, uh, to have a Zoom fellowship Zoom hour. Zoom fellowship. Zoom fellowship. Woohoo! Can't get enough of that Zoom time. <laughs> Everybody's loving the screen. So if you'd like to be a part and come to the Zoom room, uh, let us know. We're going to um, be sending that information out on a weekly basis so that you can attend. I think last time we had about 10. We had a good turnout. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun to connect with people. And uh, also to let you know, some of you have been wondering about if there's going to be some opportunities for doing Bible study or reflection for adults. And uh, I am working at that on that, and I'll, I will let you know the times uh, that that will be coming in the future. Okay. Also, this upcoming week, the day before inauguration, January 19th, we will be hosting an American Red Cross blood drive here at Wesley United Methodist Church. We are still looking for some volunteers to help, and we have sent out a sign-up genius. If you didn't see that or you're, you don't know how to do that or you don't have access to it for whatever reason, you can call the church office to volunteer and find out what's still needed. Also, because of our state with COVID and all that, this is an appointment-only blood drive. and. Mm -hmm. The blood is needed so, so, so desperately. It's really important that if you are in good health and able to give blood, that you try to find a way. So please go to the American Red Cross website. If you have an app, use that. Whatever technique you usually do, or even if you've never done it, you can do it through these two ways. Make an appointment, and please donate this life-saving blood. We appreciate it very much. And now, Molokai, and Robert and I want to invite you to join us in worship. join me for our opening prayer. Lord, three times you called Samuel. Two times he missed the call. Holy One, you also call us, sometimes out of our sleep or preoccupation, sometimes in the midst of our turmoil, often when we aren't prepared to listen. It doesn't matter how often we ignore your words, listening instead to our plans and our wants, you still whisper to us until our spirits tingle 
with anticipation that we cannot ignore. Forgive us, Lord, for times we choose not to listen or pay attention to your voice. Forgive us. Open our ears and fill us with the strength of your spirit, that we may hear your voice and bravely reply with Samuel, Here I am, Lord. It is in Christ's name we ask this. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to today's virtual children's moment with Andy and Anne. I am so excited that you chose to join us today. Today we're going to hear a story about a boy named Samuel. And in the story, he is staying with his teacher, his mentor, and it's nighttime. And he, of course, being a good student and a good boy, wants to to be attentive to and please his teacher. And so when he hears his name called in the middle of the night, he hops out of bed right away and he runs to where his teacher is sleeping and he says, did you call me? And he wakes the teacher up and the teacher says, no, of course I didn't. Go back to sleep, silly boy. This happens three different times. And then finally, the teacher says, next time this happens, you need to know it's not me calling. It's God speaking to you. And so I want you to say, yes, Lord, your servant is listening. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about Samuel and his first response. He's sleeping, but he hears his name called and he wants to do right. So he hops up and goes and talks to his teacher. And his teacher says no, and he goes back and he lays down. There is a difference in that kind of response. That's a response that says, this is my teacher, kind of like my boss, and it's important. And if my teacher calls me by name, I need to respond. It's kind of like when your parents call you. You're supposed to listen and respond and not ignore them or pretend you can't hear them. I'm not saying this to any of my children. I'm just pointing it out. But the response we're supposed to have with God is not one of, of habit or um, even obligation, or even just the simple love we hold for members of our family. It's supposed to be something a little deeper, some response that just cannot be contained, that if God calls us, we can't help but devote our entire self to God's presence because we love God so much and God loves us back in this bigger, broader way than we can possibly understand, even in the love we know between parent and child and grandparents and all those familial loves. This is bigger. So I thought, well, here's a fun way to think about it. It's not exactly the same, of course, but it gives us a glimpse of the way we can respond to God because God's response to us is always 100% complete. And it made me think of Molokai because when I call him, even if he's sleeping or distracted or rolling in the snow or, or at a food dish, he drops everything and he comes. And he comes not because he thinks he might get a treat, he comes because he loves me and he knows I love him. There's a relationship there that's deep. So Molokai right now is laying on the floor of the chapel and is completely ignoring me because he's watching Isaac. But let's just see if maybe if I call him, he will come. Molokai, what is it? What is it? Can you sit down? Can you sit? Yes. Do I want something? Oh, do I want you? He is so excited to be called and he's talking. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's saying, what is it you want? I am right here. Do you want to play? Do you have a toy? Can we play fetch? Can you just be with me and tell me how wonderful I am and what a good boy I am? When God calls us and God calls us all the time, I'm not saying we need to act like a puppy dog, but our love needs to be that complete. Our response to God needs to be this complete that we throw ourselves into the presence of God and say, here I am. I am ready for whatever you have in mind. Are you ready to pray? Okay, let's pray. Loving God, give us the ears to hear you when you call us. Give us the heart that responds immediately with love and affection and devotion and excitement to do what you would have us do. <laughs> May we have the joy of love that we find in our pets. We pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I know, right? I know, you did such a good job. Yes, you did.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Now the boy, Samuel, was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time, and visions weren't widely known. One day, Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's chest was. The Lord called to Samuel. I'm here, he said. Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So he did. Again, the Lord called Samuel. So Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me. I didn't call my son, go and lie down. Now Samuel didn't yet know the Lord, and the Lord's word hadn't yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. He got up and went to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me. Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he had been. Then the Lord came and stood there, 
calling just as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, your servant is listening. This is the word of God for the people of God. time of year again dark clouds give way to brighter passages and this feeling I notice this feeling I know it's the one that I've waited for all my life I've waited If you were to ask me at what point in my life did I hear um, God calling me into a relationship, into joy, into peace, into a prospect of participating in something bigger than myself, I couldn't tell you. I could not tell you the moment. I've had moments. But at what point do we awaken and really hear the Word of God speaking. In this story today, there is, in verse 7, there is a parenthesis, parenthetical statement. In the midst of Samuel coming up, waking up, looking around and going to Eli the priest and saying, hey, you called? And Eli says, no, and did this several times. And uh, in the parenthesis in verse 7, it says clearly that Samuel had not yet come to know the Lord. The Word of God was not yet revealed to them, him, end of parentheses. That is so telling. 
because that means that this whole story of Samuel is an awakening story. It is coming into an awareness. What is it that Samuel awakens to? I think it's in his name, Samuel. In Hebrew, Samuel, Shema El. You've heard Shema before. The Shema is what uh, Jewish people recite. It's on their doors as they enter. The, they, they, they kiss the Shema, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God. You should be all in with everything that you are, the Shema. Shema El, we translate as Samuel, means God heard. And it refers to the time that Samuel's mother, Hannah, prayed, O Lord, give me a male child. She was barren. And I will return to you, this child, into the care of the priesthood. And he will be a servant in your house. And the Lord opened her womb and she bore a son. And she named him the son God hears. That's the core. I can't even go too much further. God hears. God has heard. God deeply listens. It's a listening God. The nature of God is, is God is with us in this way. And so our awakening, our going out of those, that parentheses of the Lord has not yet been revealed to us, is a moment of awakening into the awareness of God. Not that we have found anything, but we are aware that God hears us. God is in attention to us. That is the number one experience of this God. And then we can pray the prayer later that Eli teaches to Samuel. He says, next time you hear God hears Samuel, say, speak, your servant is listening. Beautiful prayer. That is the prayer of an awakening, coming into that understanding that God, who has created you, hears you. God, who has created the earth, hears the earth, hears the rivers cry out, hears the oceans at this point in our history, hears the political cacophony, hears the cries of the poor and the marginalized, uh, LGBTQ persons trying to have a place in society, are the people of color who are coming into a place of saying, listen to us. We are here and we cannot be silent any longer. If the church of Jesus Christ comes out of this pandemic and only seeks to reopen its doors and to repeat what it has always been doing over the past hundred years, we're lost. We are short timers. I would say here at Wesley, we may have five to 10 years of life left. If that is our lesson coming out of this grand opportunity to listen deeply to ourselves, to our culture, to see the scar tissue, to see the revealing of our racial bubble that we have been nurtured in and to not question it. If we do not awaken as a church coming out of pandemic, out of that parenthesis of the pandemic, that we did not yet really fully understand God. But now, so much has been revealed to us. We begin to hear the cries of the people. We begin to see the marginalization, the pushing aside, the, the, the attempt of, of trying to find a place in the core of our society. So our call is very similar to Samuel's to Shema El. Will we awaken with the prayer of Samuel, speak, your servant is listening. We know what it's like to work for bosses who don't listen. We go to work and they come in and Maybe they're talking about themselves, but they quickly go to what needs to be done, and, and uh, we try to gather ourselves upon their energy. We know that, but we also know what it is to work for a boss who, when they come in, maybe they connect. How's your family? Yeah, I'm concerned about you. Are you okay? Is everything all right with you? 
it's to that boss. We want to do everything we can, not just to please that boss, but to enter into that boss's mission because we trust that boss. It's the same way when we know that God is attentive, God hears us. We align everything that we are. All of us, our skills, our abilities, our insecurities into the potentiality that is God. And in such a way, the church must move from redundancy to relevancy. I believe that the discussions that we have heard in the church, the discussions that uh, we have had in our own household and my own sense of call is to two areas as the church comes out of this pandemic into a future, into relevancy. Uh, the first is that we are going to be talking about how do we how do we open ourselves up to truly a listening posture? If God listens to us, we must listen to the world. And we must be open and not condescending to, oh, the lost and the least of these. But to be able to say, they're my brothers and my sisters. And I can no longer treat them as sub, as under. I must incorporate them into the life of this church. And so we want to be talking about uh, the potential of a, of a, of a community-based justice ministry that is a listening ministry first and foremost, and for our church to be very attentive to this. So we're going to be talking about what that means in terms of forming um, a new relationship with our broader community out there to get away from this uh, silo and contained approach of the church. That is a move from redundancy to relevancy. I am so appreciative of the church that has gone on before. Everything that has built, everything that it has been, but it is no longer deeply relevant. People are not pounding on, on the doors to get in to, to our worship centers anymore. This will help us to get out into the world. The second thing is the realization that the changes over the last 40 years in uh, the internet with the internet and the way that we communicate, it is uh, difficult to be able to say this, but the virtual world in which so many of us now communicate within is not the pretend world. The virtual world is the real world. It is the world in which people now, especially younger people, are constantly in communication. Yes, they are real three-dimensional people. They go to work, they have families, they make love, they, they eat food, et cetera, but they, they communicate within virtual ways. If the church does not enter into the virtual life of the world that is becoming, we will no longer be relevant. And so we need to figure out more and more how to create virtual community how to tie people in so that they're not just watching our service online, but they're invited into community. They're invited into the path of Jesus Christ, into the path of being reconcilers, healers, and listeners in this world. The only path that will get us out of redundancy and into relevancy. If at this point in my own personal history as a pastor, I cannot be a servant to this end I will have counted all my years of ministry of failure. I must serve in this capacity because I have heard God calling deeply to me personally. And I must be able to say, Lord, here I am. I am your servant, speak. I pray that this is your prayer as well as we go into our future, amen. This is the time in our service where we join together from wherever we may be in prayer using this opportunity we have that God has provided for us to share what we carry, our joys and our concerns, and to release them into God's care. So we begin today by sharing the joys and concerns that have been shared with this community of faith. We want to continue to offer up prayers for a dear member of our congregation who is, at the time of me saying this, she is still in the hospital 
she is doing better. She's been able to sit up in a chair for a significant period of time. She's becoming more aware of what's going on. So there are signs of improvement, but we need to continue to keep her and her husband and our, her family in our prayers as she goes through this time of recovery, especially in the midst of a pandemic when visiting is so difficult. We also want to lift up prayers for Edie and Mike Davis's family. Mike's brother and sister-in-law were taken by ambulance to the hospital a week ago for COVID. They have both, as of now, been released. They were treated and responded very well to the treatment and are now back home. And Edie especially wanted to express her gratitude for all of you who held them in prayers. She believes in the power of prayer, as do all of us. And she believes that their remarkable turnaround is due to being held so tightly in prayer. So she wanted to express her gratitude to all of you. And finally, we have another prayer concern to lift up. We've been praying for Diane Evanson's brother, Dave, for some time as he moves through his cancer treatments and diagnoses and all that. He just recently had an MRI and they discovered some new cancer spots on his liver. So prayers for his doctors that as they determine what is the best way to treat him and prayers for the entire family in this time of uncertainty and waiting as they try to navigate all that these new spots might mean to them and how they respond to it. Lord, hear the prayers of your children. Receive them into your care. We know that there are so many things beyond our control, but this, we have this power of prayer. And so we take these concerns as well as those that we haven't mentioned that each of us carry, and we lift them up into your care. And we also express our gratitude for the many blessings you provide to us even in this time. And finally, as our nation prepares for an inauguration in the midst of backlash and fear and hate mongering that follows the attack on the Capitol of last week, we ask for prayers for our leadership of our nation that they may truly become conduits of your peace in our world. Let us pray. of madness and misdirection, of pandemic and confusion, we need to hear your voice. We take so much onto our shoulders, God. Sometimes it's arrogance, but sometimes it's because we just don't know what else to do. There is so much need, so many wounded people. There are so many challenges and so many decisions. Help us, Lord to trust our burdens to you, to let go of trying to control what we cannot, and help us learn to listen to your call. We don't want to limit our prayers as if we believe in a magical faith in which we use prayers like wands and avoid our responsibilities through childish dependence on you. But we also don't want to live as if who we believe you to be is just 
an idea with no real impact on our lives. And so we pray for the strength and courage to work for justice and healing, for those who are forgotten and alone, who are struggling or hurting in our world, and to strive to live our faith actively and openly in our own lives. We also pray for the humility and wonder to hear your call, to seek your spirit's strength and wisdom, and to invite others into vibrant relationship with you. Because the faith we need is confidence in a reality that is bigger than us, a reality that you invite us to share. So together, we now come to you in prayer. Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Psalm 131 is a wonderful prayer. It's very short. It says, Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not conceited. I have quieted my soul before you like a child on its mother's knee. So my prayer for you as we go into our lives together is that we could learn to quiet our soul and we could truly move out of that parentheses and to be able to say, God has spoken to me. God 
who hears is calling me to listen. Go forth as a listener and as a healer. In Christ's name, 